everybody and welcome back to another live feed here with questionable authority on the D live channel I do appreciate everybody joining me anybody who does make it I don't have too big of a D live channel yet but we're growing every day I do appreciate the new subscribers all right so the first things first uh, this is the third episode of alternate economy Wednesday I do apologize let me turn on my lights so you guys can see me a little bit better there we go all right so we're back and i think i got most of the kinks worked out today so uh hopefully it'll work out a little bit better uh, so what i want to uh, cover with on today's show uh is here in washington state we had some uh, businesses that went to court over on the west side of the state uh yesterday and then uh here on the eastern side of the state we had a, a bar that it opened up against the Inslee's uh, orders. Uh, they were threatened with having their uh, liquor license removed. So they, uh, for now at least, are complying with the orders again. They shut down inside dining. That's the Black Diamond. Uh, uh, but in addition to that, uh, I wanted to invite everyone to join uh, the freedomcells.org. Go to that website, the freedomcells.org. Uh, Go ahead and sign up yourself and look and see if there's a freedom cell in your area if you are in eastern washington we do have a freedom cell set up already uh, and what we're trying to focus on is establishing an alternate economy so that we can survive uh, when they start forcing us to get vaccines to participate in in the economy as we know it uh, so that's the idea with that hey jay law hey thanks for joining me buddy i appreciate that Thanks for the lemon. <laughs> so I do appreciate having a couple of viewers on here. Like I said, for now, we're just starting out here, but I'm, I'm trying to just get off of YouTube. So I appreciate everyone that's coming over and following me over here and supporting me here and on the other platforms like Library, uh, BitChute, Minds, 3Speak. Uh, like I've said on other videos, uh, links to all my platforms is in the description of all my videos. So be sure to check those out. Uh, but thanks, Jay Law, for the for the donation of, of the lemon and joining me here. It's much appreciated. Uh, so I just want to go over the farm boy uh, here. Ooh, let me get this. There we go. So farm boy here. Let me get back. I thought I was showing you this, but I wasn't. So here's the Freedom Cells website uh, real quick. Uh, this is the Eastern Washington uh, Voluntarist Freedom Cell. Uh, shows you know here's the members down here uh, the different people that have joined up uh, we have different events every Sunday afternoon uh, we have a local meeting here in in the Spokane area uh, so if you're in the Spokane area uh, definitely look us up on the freedomcells.org and link up with us for one of those meetings if you're in Eastern Washington in general send us a message we definitely are not opposed to traveling to another town to help set up some other meetings and get people involved in other areas as well uh, so just moving on from that uh, so like I said uh, farm boy uh, they were the first one to have a hearing yesterday I'm gonna get the link pulled up here and put that in the chat so you guys can check it out as well uh, so they were farm boy was held in contempt for violating uh, the restrictions put on uh, the state by King Inslee. Uh, so the uh, they were held in contempt of court because they had a restraining order previously placed on them saying that if you don't follow these, uh, we're, we're, we're restraining you from having business in for conducting business inside of your building, basically, is what the judge said. My understanding is what this does is this puts enforcement more on the local authorities rather than just the state authorities. It puts it on the local sheriff, which is typically who carries out orders from a judge. Uh, representatives from the People's Rights, uh, Kelly Stewart was one of them, and uh, John Lamb. I think if you check out Kelly Stewart on Rumble, John Lamb on Facebook, uh, you can see some of their videos where they were actually talking to Sheriff Snaza, the sheriff from Thurston County, about whether or not he was going to help the residents who are trying to conduct business stand up against the tyrannical government, which is what the sheriff is supposed to do. Of course, he's not going to do that. Uh, but they let him know that they're not going to accept him 
uh, assisting the state in removing any more of their rights. <laughs> I appreciate that, J Law. Thank you. I'm trying to keep and keep track of the chats as well. Uh, kind of a lot going on. I'm getting used to it, but it's it's becoming a little more familiar for me. Uh, so I appreciate y'all's patience. Uh, so so basically. Uh, Farm Boys is trying to still figure out what to do right now. They're facing $2,000 a day for every day they remain open and provide in-house, in-service dining inside of their building. Uh, so moving just down the road, uh, this was actually, in, it is in Lewis County, but for some reason the case was held in Thurston County. Uh, it is the judge, uh, let me get his name up here. Uh, his name is Judge Chris Lanise. He's a Superior Court Judge from Thurston County. Uh, so that was, I uh, just shared the link there. Oop. There's the link there for the Farm Boy article I was uh, just mentioning. And here's the link for uh, the Spiffy's article here. Uh, so Spiffy's, it's basically the exact same thing going on with them. Uh, they are uh, back in court being held in contempt of this restraining order that is restraining them from conducting uh, in-service, in-house dining, in the inside the building dining. Uh, theirs, uh, they, they got a continuance. Uh, let's see right here. Doesn't really say why uh, they were given a continuance, but they were given a one-week continuance on their case so they don't necessarily say uh, face the exact same fines as of yet i'm guessing that'll probably come down the pike next week although i have some information maybe spiffies can use some of what i'm going to be showing here in a little bit uh, to help fight some of this stuff all right and then so the next story we have here to work with to take a look at is we make sure yes we've got uh, the Black Diamond here locally in Spokane Valley. Uh, they opened up uh, last week, I guess a week and a half ago, against the orders of King Inslee. They did have some outdoor tent dining. Uh, and they decided to forego that and just move everything inside so they could have their pool hall open and all that. Uh, they wanted their employees, as it states here in this article. Uh, let me see if I can find it. it does... <laughs> Uh, right here, uh, the Black Diamond had reported for a multitude of reasons, or had reopened for a multitude of reasons, but the primary driver was to give employees the opportunity to earn a living through the holiday season. Black, owner, Black Diamond owner Brandon Fenton said on a phone call. Uh, so really, he's just trying to take care of his employees. You know, they've helped him establish his business and and grow himself as an entrepreneur, it, him and his dad. And so he's trying to do what he can to give back to them. Uh, and he wanted to make sure he was open so they could try to make a little bit of extra money for the Christmas season for their to, uh, so that they could uh, be happy and maybe buy some presents for their friends and family that they might not have been able to do. That's right, j -Line, we got to help out our fellow humans. That's, that's the key. Uh, the people that work for the state, uh, they are trying to constantly take from their fellow humans. They don't create anything. They're constantly taking. So we need to help out. Uh, have a little compassion for our fellow human beings and what they might be going through. Uh, so anyways, the Black Diamond was threatened yesterday. Uh, they were given a 24-hour notice by the state liquor board that if they did not shut down, they would have their liquor license uh, revoked for, I believe it says in here, 180 days uh, they were going to have it revoked for. So that's what they faced. And today, uh, when that deadline came, they did decide to close in in-person dining inside the building and move it back outside to the tent. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. I'm a little disappointed myself, I guess, but what can I, it's, you know, it's, it's not my place. It's not my business. I tried to support them in any way I could. Uh, like I said, it sounds like their main, or, their main goal was to give their employees a little bit of opportunity to earn some extra money uh, going into the holidays, and they did accomplish that. Uh, but I guess that kind of leads me into what I want to speak about next. And maybe some of you guys uh, following this can uh, chime in here. Uh, but, you know, I think the most important thing, you know, we tried, I tried going to the liquor board, uh, you know, getting in their faces a little bit about how they're acting, how they're treating their fellow humans. You know, a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. Uh, people that don't like these restrictions are uncomfortable with, what it might take to actually get people to listen 
Uh, I've been doing this for three years now. I know that asking nicely, going to our masters, the predator class, and saying, hey, we don't like it when you steal money from us. Can you please stop? Uh, they, they don't listen. So <laughs> uh, really, it's, it's not an option to just go ask nicely. But I guess until we get more people on board, more numbers, uh, where we can show them, have a, more, a better show of force just by showing up, uh, this is what we're going to have to do because this is the, the road that everybody has to take. It's the road that I took. I first, I started going and asking nicely, you know, when I started cop watching, Hey, uh, will you guys please not shine your, your spotlight directly in my eyes. That really bright light, you know, it kind of blinds me for the next 10 minutes after you guys leave. It's not very safe. Uh, they didn't care. They just kept shining it because they're going to do what they want to do and try to make me look bad, whatever. Uh, that happens in every department, every aspect of government. When you ask nicely for permission, they're just going to turn you down because they don't, they're not like the private sector where they actually have to take care of their customers. Uh, government doesn't have to take care of anyone. They just take, they just take, 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 take. That's all they do. And then provide a fake service, a service that isn't even real uh, so that they can convince you that it's okay for them to take from you against your will. All right. I'll, get down off my soapbox from that there uh, so what that does uh, lead me into is how to, how businesses can possibly start fighting back from this I think rather than going and attacking the liquor board which I do think is important uh, but as a voluntarist as an anarchist as someone who doesn't believe in a small group calling themselves government having authority over my life uh, I don't really feel like we need to go say leave us alone or ask permission to do things. I feel like we should just start doing it. And that's what this show is all about. It's not asking permission to live our lives, to, to do trade with other people. Just doing it as long as we're not hurting anyone else, damaging or stealing anyone else's property or defrauding anyone else. Uh, we follow the non-aggression principle and we don't use force, unjust force against people who who are nonviolent and who aren't using force against anyone else. Uh, so along those lines, uh, this is something that was shared with me a while ago. Uh, I think there's some updates to it that could be made, uh, but this is basically just a form, you know, when these uh, people come in, you've already made an agreement with the liquor board when you got your liquor license. You've already made an agreement with the state when you got your business license. And now these entities, the state, the liquor board, labor and industries, they're trying to change how you're the rules of the game after you've already started uh, so this is one way here pardon me uh, this is one way here to fight that uh, this was an email that was sent out now this was used in England uh, there's been some videos circulated of a guy who did actually use this then when the police came to hassle him about being open uh, he used he used this uh, email here so it's pretty simple uh, someone's just made a form and basically, like I said, they're, they're presenting you, when they come to you, they're presenting you uh, with some demands that they're asking you to, you know, a condition. Will you accept our conditions, these new terms? We want you to shut down and you haven't done that. So we want to fine you. Uh, so this is, I'm just not going to go through all these, but these are, you kind of get the idea. And I'm going to put links to all these uh, in the description of this video so you guys can go check them out for yourself i encourage you to go share them with business owners take them around maybe print them out and take them to business owners uh myself i've documented my struggles with my son's school there's a section in here about dealing with schools uh, so i encourage you to share these watch the videos associated with them uh, we're gonna watch a little bit of one of them and and get this information out there to all your friends and family so we can start standing up against this not just about going and trying to tell convince the order followers not to follow orders that's a pretty hard task they're pretty programmed but if we can start convincing people that they don't have to comply i think that's where we might make some ground uh, so basically here this is uh like i said this was in england but it does apply here uh, uh basically it says what you're going to do with this email is put the government on notice of conditional acceptance this is the highest form of honor and they have made you an offer you have accepted it under conditions. The ball is in their court. Then they must rebut your points with clear factual evidence. So this is all we're doing is you're going to send the mayor, the police chief, all the officials in your area that might try to come down on your business. You're going to send them this email. Uh, you're going to print it out in a nice letter form and send it to them, maybe with certified mail. 
Uh, so here, I will conditionally accept your demands on proof of the following. A document that shows and provides scientific evidence of the testing procedure being used in this country that 100% positively identifies COVID-19, otherwise known as SARS-CoV-2, not any other type of coronavirus in a living being beyond any reasonable doubt. Two, you can guarantee and prove that the test being used to justify these guidelines will not give a false positive result. I think this is where it gets really important. Evidence that this is law because it clearly says guidelines. A copy of the two-way contract signed by both parties where I agreed to follow these guidelines. The government website clearly states COVID-19 is no longer considered an HCID. Please provide scientific proof of it being highly contagious. So a HCID is a highly contagious infectious disease. Uh, and it was back in like June, I remember England uh, changed the classification so it was not uh, considered a highly contagious infectious disease anymore. I'm sure we have something similar to that in the United States, uh, but you can take that part out as well. And I'm gonna show you some other uh, emails and letters you can, affidavits you can fill out as well. Now this one I think is really important too. Can you confirm that the current medical threat to a normal healthy individual under 17 and confirm how many critically ill healthy people without any underlying conditions there are in ICU so I can make an informed decision on these guidelines? What grounds does an alleged public health threat which has downgraded in severity levels in March become of higher importance than a long-term threat I face in terms of mental and financial ruin? So now you're getting into the part of saying, how does this health threat uh, become a higher importance to my life, to me and my life, and, and how I live my life? And they have to prove to you that it is of, of a higher importance, and they can't do that. And are you willing to accept full liability for any and all financial, physical, and or mental health problems brought on by, the following, by following this guideline and closing my business? I think that's another important one. If they're going to force us to do this, are they willing to compensate for any, uh, any, anything bad that happens to us, whether it be a mental illness, we lose our business, any of these sorts of things? Are they willing to compensate us for that? Probably not. And honestly, why? Why would I just voluntarily shut something down, my business down, knowing that I'm probably going to lose it? Just because, well, it's okay. You know, the, this little small group of gangsters calling themselves government, they're going to steal money from other people and then give it to me since I lost my business because I followed their guidelines. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, here's another one really important. Where there is no victim, there is no crime. Please explain to me how I am breaking the law by not following these guidelines. Uh, so anyways, like I said, I'm going to provide a link to this. Uh, in the de in, in the description of this video when I post it uh, to other locations. Uh, once I'm done with it here on DLive. <laughs> J-Law. Uh, yes, this, this is crazy. And yes, there are people that... I think we just need to shut down. Uh, it's really amazing to me how many <laughs> how many people are are just falling for this and really forget to just think critically. Uh, this is another thing I wanted to show you. This is another way businesses can fight. Now this is this I think is the key. I think a really good way rather than sending emails out and asking people to not come hassle you. I think this is a really good one. This was shared with me a little while back, uh, back in, it looks like, August or September, this was shared with me. Uh, but I went back and found it because it's really important. Uh, this is in Danville, New York. Uh, so uh, what happened is an entrepreneur there, a guy who owned a bar, was shut down. Uh, and he, he found some ways around it. So uh, let me just see, show you here. Uh, so the sign Town Tavern still hangs on Main Street in Dansville, and the door is sometimes left wide open. However, Dansville Mayor Pete Vaught says the bar has been closed for months and is accusing the owner of bending COVID safety rules and serving liquor without a license. Oh, what an evil person selling liquor without a license. Hey, thanks for the follow, Gogs. I do appreciate that. Uh, so... This is where some ba the city and some of the other uh, owners of bars in, in Dansville, New York, are starting to come down on this guy because he found a way to keep his business open and they can't do anything about it. 
So it goes on. Indeed, behold the beauty of the Catch-22 bureaucrat, bureaucrats have created for themselves. Uh, so, so the New York State Liquor Authority pulled the liquor license from the town tavern on August 7th after several violations. Uh, so the Black Diamond, you need to be paying attention to this here. I'm going to send this to them. I have a uh, the general manager there. I've become pretty friendly with him, so I'm going to send him this uh, when I'm done with this, everybody, so he can he can check it out. Maybe they want to look at doing something like this. Uh, so the, the liquor authority now has no jurisdiction over them because they pulled their liquor license. Uh, so as far as enforcement, it has to go to local police because the liquor board, just like here, the Washington State Liquor Board, it's a state agency. It's not run locally. So once they pulled the liquor license, now they no longer have jurisdiction to go in there. Uh, so enforcement, as it says here, is up to local police. Uh, so that's pretty cool there. Now, equally thrilling, it says, the Livingston County Health Department claims that due to the tavern's self-proclamation as a private club, it is not able to regulate COVID rules there. It says it would only regulate it if it was a food service establishment. So the town tavern not only uh, changed its... I guess it's classification as a public accommodation to a private club. Uh, so now the local police don't have jurisdiction there. They can't just go in there. It's like it's private property. They have to have a warrant to go in there. Uh, so this is awesome. Now the mayor claims the owner was able to dismiss the police because it was his private property. He had gone in there and the owner had actually escorted him out and said it was a private affair and he had no business being in there, said the mayor. <laughs> uh, so this is awesome. Uh, and then it says the mayor says police are also accusing the owner of accepting donations in exchange for drinks. So this is key. You know, one of the ways they get us is they call it, uh, they say that we're doing commerce. So if I give you a drink and you give me some cash or some money in it, some fiat currency in exchange for that, uh, then we have done commerce. That's an exchange of goods uh, and legally. Uh, that is a term that now they feel like they can come and we have to ask permission to do that, get a business license. If we're doing it with alcohol, we have to get a liquor license, ask, ask extra permission and pay extra permission fees uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so what they're basically doing is saying, we're not doing commerce. I'm here. Yeah, have a drink. Oh, and you want to donate some money towards the cause of me living my life? That's an excellent idea. So this maybe is what we should start looking at with the Black Diamond is things like this instead of them selling drinks well they're a private club now so maybe they even have a, a membership fee of five dollars to get in the door and maybe that five dollars for new members uh they're gonna they're gonna give you a first drink uh on the house and then after that you know what they just like their friends so if you ask them for a drink they're gonna give you a drink and their best friends uh make donations of maybe five dollars uh per drink uh, towards the the establishment, uh, towards the livelihood of the establishment, a donation for the good of the establishment, right? Uh, so this is the way we have to start thinking about these. This bar, uh, they got their liquor license pulled, uh, so they changed. So they're not a public accommodation anymore. They determined themselves to be private, and then they didn't sell their drinks anymore. They got they collected donations. Uh, so these are the types of things that we have to start doing to live outside of the economy to get into the you know outside of the traditional economy that's owned by this owned and run by the centralized banking systems and this uh, last little bit i want to share with you here uh this is from uh ace of coins and it's all about the fake pandemic so there's all sorts of just like that email i was reading earlier uh this here is for if you were wrongfully terminated by an employer because you're an employee and you refuse to wear a mask uh, that's what some of these letters here, I'll just pull one up here, uh, take a look at it. Uh, so what it says here, uh, we have an agreement that has been in place and approximately give you the date. So these are, these are things that you fill out here. These are forms that basically are all ready to go that you're going to fill out. I'm, not, I'm now being asked to undertake certain medical interventions as a condition of continuing under the terms of our agreement and engaging in my profession. I have a series of questions before accepting any of these changes in our agreement. So basically what it's saying is, hey, when I started on here, we made an agreement for me to come into work. I was going to work this many hours a week. This was going to be my schedule. I was going to wear clothing, but there was nothing about a mask, nothing about donning something across my face that is going to affect 
my health. Uh, so now that you're requiring me to do that as part of my job, I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, so just like I said, you can read through these. I'm going to put a link actually here. Let me do that real quick. Put a couple of links here. Uh, so real quick here, this next link is the link to the article in the Spokesman Review about the Black Diamond shutting down. And then here is a link where you can view all the emails that I am currently going through here on the Ace Ace of Coins website. Uh, so this email that you're looking at here on your screen right now, uh, that link that I just put in the chat, uh, that's where you can go to this website and pull all these up. You can print them out for yourself. You can figure out which one works the best for your particular situation, your employer. All you have to do is fill in the blanks here. Obviously, uh, up here we have uh, where it says your name, your address, city, state, zip. Uh, you're just going to fill that out for yourself. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. These are PDF uh, templates here. Uh, you can see there's four different sample letters here. Uh, like I said, each one of them is a little bit different, so I would recommend you read through them, see which one applies to you the most. Uh, if you have any questions, my email is questionableauthority at protonmail.com. I do not give legal advice. I am not a lawyer, uh, but I am very, I feel it's very important that we start trying these things out. So if someone has questions and I can help you try to uh, get the answers to those questions, I'm more than happy to try to do so. Uh, so like I said, there are uh, five different letters here. Uh, regarding if you are terminated by your employer or if you're being required to wear your ma wear a mask against your will uh, by your employer. Uh, then we've got uh, another one here, a notice of wrongful termination. Uh, they've also, I'm going to show you their BitChute channel here in a little bit. They show you how to file these documents in court. So this is, that's actually one of the most important parts is being able to just file this stuff yourself. If you don't have the money to go hire a lawyer to do it, uh, maybe you can just do it yourself. Just pay the filing fees, uh, maybe $500 with your local court, and file these things yourself and get this rolling yourself. All you have to do is look up the procedures of the court to make sure you're following those procedures correctly. They also, like I said here, I'm having some issues with my son uh, at his school. Uh, so they have some letters here. Uh, right along the, li the lines of, you know, these schools now wanting us to have our temperatures taken, answer all these questions, just to be able to go to school and do things we used to be able to do uh, before the supposed health emergency changed everything. Uh, so right here, here's a, here's a letter that you can print out, fill out, take to your school. Uh, there's three different form letters here for the school. Uh, we've got them if you live in apartments. And they're telling you if you want to hang out in the common area of the apartments that you got to wear a mask there. Uh, we've got some letters here uh, for those situations as well. Uh, so these these are ways to, you know, like I said, I don't I don't really believe in all this uh, legal stuff. It's just words on paper that I didn't agree to. Uh, somebody just told me that supposedly because somebody else put words on paper. Uh, the people that say that those words on paper have meaning have authority over my life. I never agreed with that. So I just live my life. I don't partake in it. I don't ask permission to do any of this crap. I just live my life. That's why I'm trying to help other people understand how to live outside of the economy and just, and just live free and not hurt anybody else. But one of the keys is you have to understand how to keep the man, how to keep the government, the state off your back. And so these give you a little bit of legal grounds to help you keep the government off your back when you don't want to play by their new normal rules. We also have some retailers. If you're just a shopper and going into a store and they're saying, oh, you can't come in here without a mask and they're going to try to trespass you. Uh, these here forms, you fill these out and they will say, no, no, you can't just trespass me because of a public health officer is saying that, you're, that you have to force me to wear, me, wear a mask in here. Uh, so these address some of those issues. Uh, so also check those out. Those don't necessarily have to do with the underground economy as far as on the business side, being a business owner. But part of the underground economy is also being a customer uh, and exchanging goods in different ways and making sure we do it outside of the normal, the new normal economy. Uh, so here, uh, this is really good. I'm just going to kind of stroll down here. Likely notices that you're going to want to file with the court. 
Uh, like I said here, there's links to their some YouTube videos. He's also started a BitChute channel. I would suggest you go subscribe to him on BitChute, not on YouTube. Do not use YouTube unless you absolutely have to. Um, so here, just a bunch of different forms here. Reporting uh, disaster fraud. So some of the uh, cities, you know, are declaim are are declaring these emergencies, these disasters, so that they can uh, do away with the normal procedures and protocols and get get money uh, sent to them faster uh, because of these emergency declarations. So these are some ways, some of the ways to fight this here. Uh, like I said, this is aceofcoins.com. I put that link up there in the description. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate that, J-Law. Uh, yeah, these forms are important. Definitely print them out and keep them with you. All right, so then at the end, I just want to play a little bit of this video. So this uh, link right here, their BitChute channel. Uh, this is it. I found this video right here. Uh, Make your business a fortress against the fake pandemic. Uh, I really quick before I play a little bit of that video, I want to go down. There's several good videos here, uh, but this is the one right here that I thought was uh, pretty important. Instructions for filing a lawsuit. You know what? That is important enough. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm just going to throw that in the, there you go in the chat. I just threw the link to this instructions for filing a lawsuit so this is if you do have any issues with these you do have a business violating your rights you did you were wrongfully terminated any of these things uh this is going to help you file those documents all right so this is the one i wanted to play a little bit of here if you're a business you're thinking about opening up or you have opened up you need to just well, hi there stop everyone complying. Uh, this is john jay and we're gonna you need to just stop complying and open your business uh, so I'm going to be quiet for a little bit here and get this plan, uh, this video here. Uh, this is John Jay, and we're going to talk about businesses and the fake pen, and it ends in IC, okay? We're going to talk about that, and I want you all to understand, if you're running a business, I want you to... If you've already suspected a couple of things, I'm just going to tell you what I've seen in the last few months as to be effective to deal with this insanity. Number one is don't comply. So I'm going to show you how to deal with <clears throat> what happens. Now, don't get scared because um, it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be, but it doesn't. It's just going to get worse. If you try to comply, it's going to get worse. So you're better off not complying. Okay, because there's no legal duty. So let's just get into this. Um, I've, I'll take a case at any stage. Okay, so this first one I'm going to talk about. Um, we get to use discovery because the business has a temporary restraining order against it. And the person running the business continues to run the business without without stopping. Cool. That's what you have to do. And um, let me just share a screen here. I'm going to flip over to that document. Now, this document I'm going to share with you is a response that we got back after sending questions to the agency that obtained the temporary restraining order in court. And they did it without, with three affidavits that had no relevance whatsoever, okay? And uh, anyways, so what's supposed to happen is the agency is supposed to obtain a physician's affidavit from a physician who has identified someone affiliated or associated with that business as having a communicable disease and then take action. So that never happened, right? What they're doing is they're policing interventions that they've imposed on businesses, but they're not policing the discovery and administration of a communicable disease. They're acting as if everybody has it. And so they're only policing the intervention, which is yet to be proven anyways. So by di these discovery questions we're gonna okay so that was really key right there what he just said so uh basically what the guidelines are is the guidelines are for people that are sick and we've exposed this a little bit in idaho here earlier on when this all started uh the guidelines apply to quarantining in these specific legal terms 
that state that you have to have a biological agent with you, either in your body or in a vial. You have to somehow be containing that in order for these guidelines to apply to you. And so what he just said here is he's right. They're policing whether or not you're following the guidelines, but they're not policing whether or not you're required to follow the guidelines because there's someone who's infected among you. So if they can't prove that, they're, that you're employing an infected person or that you've allowed an, aff an affected person to come into your shop without following the guidelines, uh, then that, that really removes a lot of the, uh, the grounds to stand on in their case. That's uh, basically what he's saying there. Step it back a little bit, okay? And our purpose here in discovery is to ask if there was a basis for the injunction. And then once we get enough discovery responses back, which I, I think we could probably do right now, but I like to just bash their head in a little bit more as it were, uh, and then we'll get it, we'll throw the thing out. We'll get the restraining order dissolved, okay? So we asked if we could see uh, copies of the, all the physician's affidavits, okay? Identifying the defendant or anyone associated with the defendant as having been suspected of, of a communicable disease, okay? And then... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I realized I forgot I uh, muted my mic there uh, while I was playing that. I just wanted to say uh, that was key right there, just in case you guys didn't uh, pick up on that. Uh, what he said was uh, that in discovery, they're asking for the physician specifically. I, they want to see the physician's affidavits that identify the defendant, so the business owner, or specifically any of the patrons or employees of the business, uh, of having identified as having a communicable disease of any kind, because that's what these guidelines are. The guidelines said they are to prevent the spread of these of this disease. So if they're to prevent the spread of it, then in order for them to apply to you, they have to prove that you have this communicable disease that they're trying to prevent the spread of. Uh, so that's really the key on where a lot of these things hinge. And it really is in the details like that. We really have to start understanding the legal language of all these different things that they're attacking us with. Uh, they really are predators. It's the predator class, the way that they use this legalese that they understand and we don't. And they use it against us. They use our ignorance of this against us. So we really need to start studying that. Uh, but anyhow, I do appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, J-Law, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. I got someone else joining me. Gogs, I appreciate you subscribing to the, the D-Live channel during the feed here. Uh, come back every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to be doing alternate economy Wednesdays. Uh, what we're going to try to do for next Wednesday is I want to start putting some of this into action. So uh, just a little bit of homework for everyone in your own area. And this is what I'm, I've started doing here and I'm going to have it ready for next week is I want an actual activity, an alternate economy activity. The first thing we can do is start putting together a list of people in your area that are willing to participate in an alternate economy. It's the most simple and basic thing we can do. Just start putting together in a list. So like myself, uh, I can offer carpentry services, finished carpentry, uh, framing, stuff like that, uh, lots of different things like that. I can do uh, minor car repairs, uh, lots of different things. I can cook, all sorts of things. Uh, what I accept, I, I can barter. Uh, I can accept different sorts of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Monero, different things like that. Uh, Ethereum, I have lots of different uh, cryptocurrency wallets. Uh, I don't mind, like I said, I don't mind bartering. Uh, I have a cat. Maybe someone has a bunch of extra cat food and they need a job that I, that I can do. Uh, maybe I can, we can exchange my labor for that cat food. Uh, so there's lots of different things we can exchange money for. So what you want to do is make a list of what, you, what services you can provide and what things you are willing to accept in trade for, for said services. Uh, and then start making a list of yourself and others and sharing that with other people in your area too so that we can start relying on each other and start building this alternate economy so that we don't have to, to we don't have to submit to what the the banksters the the bankster cartel is is requiring us to do all right guys well you've heard me talk enough for the for the evening j law i appreciate it uh you're my big fan right now on d live 
You're my number one man. You're my number one fan, j -Law. I really appreciate that. <laughs> now, really, I appreciate everybody giving me the support. Uh, you guys have, uh, have an excellent night. Uh, don't forget to live free. And, of course, build that alternate economy in your area so that we really can start living free. We don't have to be slaves to this fiat currency anymore. Peace out, y'all. Thank you for supporting my work. Independent thought and journalism are under attack. If you want to fight censorship and promote independent thinking and freedom, we need your support. It's not just me. All truth-minded content creators are getting pushed off of the most popular and censorship-loving social media platforms. You can support me by making a donation of cryptocurrency. I have multiple wallets listed in the description of every video. If you still love your international bankster's fiat currency, I have links to PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App listed as well. If you're unable to donate in that fashion, consider signing up for Library, 3Speak, Hive, Steemit, DTube, or Mines using the links below and earn some crypto for yourself and me by using my affiliate links. Then, you and I can both be earning decentralized cryptocurrency for you simply watching and interacting with my content.